Paulette's eyes fluttered at the soft squeak of unoiled metal hinges grinding together. Slowly, she raised her head off the floor, her vision unfocused and blurry. She blinked as the door to her room swung open, her thoughts as cold and indistinct as the morning mist. She lifted a hoof and rubbed away some of the grime left from the previous night's tears. She couldn't remember falling back asleep. When she managed to return her attention to the source of the noise, she discovered two ponies framed in a doorway. Someone said something. Twilight shook her head, trying to clear away the cobwebs. They repeated themselves, the noise garbled and distant. I don't understand, Twilight croaked. One of the ponies, a pale yellow mare, took a step closer. Are you okay, Twilight? She asked, her voice pushing through the fog that shrouded her thoughts. Recognition teased the edge of Twilight's mind. A nurse's cap rested atop her pale blue mane, and her familiar face was covered in far too much makeup. An attempt to mask the crow's feet at the corners of her eyes. Twilight had seen her before, but a name eluded her. Did I see her around the hospital? Or was it back in Ponyville? Which life is she from? Twilight shivered when she was unable to answer herself. Pushing the questions aside for later, she looked down at herself. She lay where she had passed out the night before, the awkward position and hard tile floor explaining the dull ache in her limbs. Her coat was matted in places with a salty mixture of sweat and tears. Her eyes and throat felt raw. She was cold, fatigued, and a long way from home. She glanced up. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. The nurse hurried over as Twilight attempted to stand. Careful, honey, she cautioned, helping Twilight to her hooves. Now, what happened? Why were you on the floor? Twilight averted her gaze. I had a bad dream, she whispered, sounding raspy and weak. I fell out of bed and I just... I couldn't... Her voice trailed away. Oh, you poor thing the nurse said as she picked up the damp sheets and deposited them on the bed. She sounded sincere enough to Twilight's ears, although it could be hard to tell when every one of them forced it so often. Well, we've got your morning medication coming. It should help you feel better. Once we've taken care of inspections, you'll get a chance to go up to the bathroom and freshen up. Part of Twilight tried to rekindle her earlier passion. It wanted her to get angry and ask questions. What were in those drugs? Why did she need to be medicated regularly? What were they doing to her? The flame flickered and dimmed, threatening to go out completely. Her whole body ached from her unnatural sleeping position on the hard tiles. Her head throbbed in time with her heartbeat. Her body ached for something to take the pain away, something that could even give her a momentary relief. Keeping her mouth shut, Twilight nodded in understanding. She couldn't give in and ask for painkillers. She wasn't going to trust anything they could give her. The nurse's expression softened. We were told about your situation this morning, and it's pretty obvious that you had more than a bad dream. Twilight flinched slightly when she reached out, but the nurse ignored it, giving her shoulder a gentle, reassuring squeeze. My advice is to talk to some pony about it. Twilight glanced away. I don't really- I know you don't feel like it right now, she interrupted, but you need to talk to some pony. If you keep everything bottled up inside, you'll only end up hurting yourself. The nurse's familiar words were painfully similar, drawing out memories she would rather remain buried. The imposter's vicious smile and cruel words echoed in her mind. You're hurting yourself by holding on to your delusions. Twilight shivered. I- I'll think about it she offered, giving the nurse a weak smile. Please do, the other mare said with a nod, dropping her hoof back to the floor. She eyed Twilight's disheveled bed. And don't worry about making your bed this morning. Just leave the sheets on the mattress, and we'll have the custodians come by and change them for you. You just worry about getting ready for your morning checks. What do you mean? The nurse frowned for a moment before her mouth opened in recognition. Oh, I'm sorry, Twilight. I forgot that you're dealing with some memory issues. She smiled apologetically. 
Like I said, we are only told about your special condition this morning. Originally, Dr. Applejack was supposed to be here when you got up to help you get acclimated to the schedule again. But after yesterday, well, she wasn't going to be able to make it in so early. Is she okay? asked Twilight, honest concern coloring her otherwise flat tone. She's going to be fine. She had to get her eyes inspected again, just to be sure she was going to be able to work today. I was told she'll meet up with you at breakfast. Until then, I'll be helping you along and getting you back into the routine of things. Her words were like a beam of warm light cutting through the shadows, bringing Twilight a measure of welcome relief. That's good, she replied. Turning her head, she finally noticed the orderly standing just outside, watching the two mares as he held the door open. Some of her good cheer evaporated. Uh, so... What do I need to do, then? I printed off a copy of your schedule for you. The nurse pulled a folded sheet of paper from a pocket. As she drew closer, Twilight glanced at the nurse's name tag. Coldheart. Memories of an identical nurse in an identical outfit working at Ponyville's hospital spring up in Twilight's mind, forming mirror images of one another. Which one is the real one? She asked forlornly, as she stared at the nurse's. A chill passed up her spine as her friends appeared in stereo, each one standing beside her twin. They were a warped dichotomy. The warm smiles of the friends she knew juxtaposed against the jagged sneers of the friends from her dream. The question reverberated through her mind again. Which one is real? Twilight's eyes narrowed as she focused her anger inward, crushing the images into oblivion. No, no more doubts. I know which one is real, she told herself, the last of the ice melting away as the fires of firm conviction blossomed within her chest. Nurse Coldheart failed to notice the slight shift in Twilight's expression. As you can see, it lists all your activities for the day. She favored her with another smile as Twilight took the offered schedule. We all know how much you like to have everything neat and organized, after all. Twilight ignored the familiar, patronizing tone and unfolded the paper. It was a simple series of blocks and faded black ink, a copy of a copy, with hoof-written corrections done in pencil. It was unorganized and almost illegible, so much that Twilight felt a sudden desire to rewrite the thing herself. She suppressed the urge, forcing herself to pay attention as the older pony gestured at the top of the paper. We're doing morning checks right now. You need to bring along your grooming bag and a change of clothes. Clothes? Twilight glanced down at herself, having forgotten she was even wearing anything. The patient's gown was a drab, short-sleeved affair with BMPH spelled out in humorless black letters in the back, the shape bringing to mind the vests every pony wore during winter wrap-up. The normally loose fabric clung to her body, the shirt as damp as her sheets. They had probably started their life the same green color as the walls, but years of indiscriminate bleaching and heavy-duty washing had left them faded and worn out. An apt metaphor for some of the ponies around here, Twilight thought, lifting her head and sparing a look at the wrinkles the nurse tried to hide with makeup. Oh, so where do I get a change of clothes? The nurse gestured to a patch of bare wall near the door guiding Twilight's eyes to a small lever she had somehow missed the night before. In here, said Coldheart, as she opened the closet door, revealing two small shelves. The top half held a small stack of green fabric. The bottom shelf held an empty container. Clean shirts go on top, dirty ones go in the basket, she said, handing Twilight a replacement shirt before closing the door. Pretty self-explanatory. Twilight nodded already crafting a mental version of the daily routine. Part of her wanted to know the schedule forwards and backwards, because it made her more comfortable having her day planned out in neat little boxes. As a filly, her family had given her no small amount of teasing for her insistence on crafting her own crayon schedules for their days out together. But there was another, very different part of her that valued memorizing her schedule as well. It was the part that refused to accept anything to dull her pain, that narrowed its eyes every time she was talked down to, that reminded her how she was trapped in a lie and couldn't trust anyone. 
it saw the schedule as something useful. One small tool amongst thousands. A tiny scrap of information she needed if she were to free herself. And there was always more to learn. Anything else I need to know? Just don't dawdle once the staff wakes you up. You've been good about it in the past, but, well, due to your condition, it's worth telling you again. We're on a schedule, after all, and there are a lot of patients on this ward. That means lots of ponies that we have to get up, get showered, and get medicated. We cannot and will not tolerate any delays, the nurse emphasized. She stared at Twilight for a moment before continuing, some levity working its way back into her voice. Now, because of your condition, I'm going to walk you through everything as if you were a new patient. At least up until we meet with Dr. Applejack, that is. That way I can help you out and make sure you don't get in any trouble. That's probably for the best, said Twilight, remembering how angry the nurses had gotten when she had stepped into the wrong line after dinner. Their disapproving faces shifted into those of her friends. She flinched. Calling up her convictions, she pushed the doubt aside, forcing her attention back onto the mare in front of her. I don't want to cause any fuss. That's what I'm here for, to make sure things go as smoothly as possible. The doctor said your memory should come back with time, but until then, it's best to keep treating this like it's your first day all over again. So, once the patients have made their beds and picked up their things, they all line up outside for their morning checks. She spoke over her shoulder gesturing for Twilight to follow as she walked past the orderly holding open the door. It lets us know exactly when every pony is ready, so come along and we'll get that all taken care of. Twilight hesitated at the entrance, fearing what terrors and tribulations another day would bring. The thought of confronting more ponies from her past drove a sliver of cold dread into her breast. Part of her longed for nothing more than to stay locked in her room safe from the emotional turmoil of finding her friends trapped within the same broken world. You're ready for this, she told herself, fighting against the icy apprehension. It was just a nightmare. You can't let a bad dream turn you into a frightened little fool. Those weren't your friends. You are stronger than this. Each thought was delivered like a hammer against an anvil, bursting with fire and confidence. They left no room for doubt. Twilight didn't know if she believed a single word. Lifting a trembling hoof, she stepped over the threshold. Twilight couldn't tell if she was nervous or relieved to be standing in line with a bunch of strangers. Ever since she had come face to face with Applejack, she had wondered if the absence of familiar faces would have been a blessing. Having her friends close could be comforting, but the knowledge that they were trapped with her made it a double-edged sword. A definitive answer continued to elude her. Hello, Twilight. No, don't engage her. She surreptitiously turned her head and glanced down the row of patients. She felt like she had gone to a party and ended up at the wrong address. The rest of the patients were unknowns, ponies she hadn't noticed around Prodhoof and couldn't remember from Ponyville. And like slowly realizing she was at the wrong party, she felt herself growing more anxious the longer she went without locating a friendly face. She didn't know any pony there. That's not exactly true, she admitted. A few yards away were two ponies she did know, Coldheart and Bonbon. Bon. The nurses were talking quietly amongst themselves while a pair of orderlies ensured each room was empty. The rest of the staff were as foreign as the patients, which offered little reassurance. Twilight, ignore her and she'll stop talking. After escorting her out of the room, Coldheart had guided Twilight to a spot along the wall, leaving her there with orderlies to stay put until she got back. The rest of the ward's patients had begun emerging from their rooms as soon as Coldheart had trotted away, each one carrying a small grooming kit and a chain of clothing. Quietly, they had taken up positions abreast of Twilight, forming a close line along the wall behind her. A very close line. She examined the two ponies on either side of her, avoiding eye contact and doing her best to keep from drawing attention to herself. Although they had been standing next to her for a few minutes without doing anything threatening, apprehension still tingled beneath her hooves. She had no problem admitting that they made her nervous. It was entirely justifiable. 
They were mental patients, after all. Twilight, darling. She'll take the hint eventually and leave you alone. The Pegasus to her left coughed. He certainly was eye-catching, his brilliant orange coat and white mane almost impossible to ignore. Once, he had probably appreciated the attention. His high cheekbones and long limbs should have given him a noble air, but whatever had sent him to Broadhoof had taken his good looks as well as his sanity. A gaunt and unkempt figure, there were deep bags beneath his bloodshot eyes, just visible beneath his rat's nest of a mane. Standing motionless and staring at the floor, he could have been mistaken for a statue if it weren't for his assortment of nervous tics and involuntary spasms. Mumbling something beneath his breath, he continued to look down, his eyes never wavering from the spot beneath his hooves. Twilight! Her patience snapped. What? She hissed as she jerked her head to the right, glaring at the mare beside her. What is it? The unicorn's face split into a broad grin. Oh, it's nothing, my dear. I was just saying hello, and you weren't responding. She replied cheerfully. Despite being no older than Twilight, she spoke with the smooth sophistication of an educated Canterlot socialite. However, her twitching tail and inability to sit still betrayed any attempt at poison grace. So I thought it best to ensure that you had indeed heard me, and I'm so pleased that you did. I really am. Well, that groaned. Can I be allowed to suffer in quiet dignity? She thought, eyeing her neighbor. The white unicorn was perched close enough that her perfume was nearly overwhelming, making Twilight feel like an entire flower garden had invaded her nostrils. She stood in stark contrast to the disheveled Twilight, her clothing spotless and her silvery mane crafted into the sort of elegant bun Rarity would have admired. She seemed to notice the discrepancy between their appearances at the same moment. My word! Twilight, you look a fright! Are you alright? For once, her eyes had stopped roaming around the room. Instead, she stared at Twilight with a look of worried revulsion, like one might give a crying foal with a leaking diaper. She took a step back. I mean, look at what has happened to you! You look positively horrendous! Twilight sighed, any attempt at keeping herself looking more futile by the minute. I had a rough night, she stated irritably before looking away. Well then, it's a blessing that we are about to head into the spa. I would just die in shame if you were to appear in public looking like some sort of... of... indigent. She spat the last word with distaste. Twilight glanced back, her curiosity getting the better of her. Spa? Spa, bathing house, whatever they wish to call the facilities here. She sniffed dismissively, seemingly unaware that she was tapping her hoof against the floor. Of course, the facilities of the Sanctum are really quite lacking. I've already written my parents about it. More than once, in fact. They are obviously getting overcharged whatever they are paying. Twilight lifted an eyebrow. Sanitarium? Do you mean like a health resort? Well, of course, darling, the other mare said, rolling her eyes. What else? But I can understand your confusion. After all, this is hardly any sort of resort. The service is terrible. The other guests are often members of the lower classes or crude degenerates. She glanced at the silent stallion on the other side of Twilight with another contemptuous sniff. And the attendees are quite bossy and uncouth, a lot of them. It is a disgrace. I see, Twilight replied, as the pieces began to fall into place. So why did you come to this, uh, resort? It's for my health. I have a very delicate constitution, you see. My parents have sent me away to rest and recuperate after some dreadful events back in Cantalot. She waved a hoof dismissively. It was just a slander and rumor, but you know how jealous and petty other ponies can be, I'm sure. She brought her wandering eyes back to Twilight. I'm a student at St. Tulip's School for Mares, she added, lifting her head proudly. I'm certain you've heard of it. Twilight mumbled something noncommittal, but the other mare continued over her. Well, my parents thought it would be for the best if I took a sabbatical from boarding school and left the capital for a while, so we could let the press die down. It is absolutely appalling what the press will print these days. 
being the heirs of the Silver family does make one the target for gossip and tabloid rumors from time to time. But those scoundrels had the gall to publish such terrible lies about me. But then they were just repeating what those horrid beasts who ran the school said. They told every pony I was a corrupting influence upon the other mares, and accused me of taking advantage of my fellow students. Me! Can you believe anything so absurd? She covered her mouth with a carefully maintained hoof as she laughed, the polite gesture of noble grace betrayed by the manic glint in her eyes. Not at all, Toilette replied hesitantly. She took a shuffling step backwards, desperate to put a little more distance between herself and the mare's wide and unblinking stare. I mean, I am not a disgusting filly fooler. I come from a good family. It's just lies and, and, and libelous assumptions based upon misunderstandings. She trembled slightly as a smile spread across her face. But that is all in the past. Daddy is going to send for me as soon as it is prudent for me to return to Candelot. Scandals like that, even when they are absolute fabrications, take time to fade away. I know that he has been working his hooves to the bone, clearing my good name. It shan't be long before I'm able to return home to my family. It will be so very nice to see mother and father again. The mare closed her mouth, grinning happily, as she stared at Twilight. Shifting her weight from side to side, Twilight averted her eyes, looking anywhere but the other mare. Twilight's relief at the silence quickly soured, the quiet only deepening the awkwardness between them until it became an almost physical force pressing down upon her. Uh, so, how long until you get to leave, do you think? She eventually asked, the unwanted conversation preferable to the oppressive quiet. Oh, it won't be long now, I can assure you, her hoof resumed, tapping the tile floor erratically as if keeping the beat to a tuneless song only she could hear. It's been a few years already, but I've been writing to Daddy almost every week. As soon as he responds to one of my letters, then I will know for sure. These sorts of things just take time, really. She glanced around the hallway. I would be glad to be away from here. It is just not a place where a true lady should spend much time in. Twilight simply nodded in agreement. Thankful that the mare was content to stare elsewhere. That was an ordeal, she thought, exhaling slowly. It felt like someone had taken rarity, sophistication, Pinkie Pie's boundless energy, and blended them together with an extra cup of crazy thrown into the mix. A chill passed down her spine at the thought of her friends. Memories of the insults they had hurled at her brought back some of the morning's anxieties. Her head throbbed with a powerful ache, but she endured it. It was only a nightmare. Your friends still love you, she repeated to herself, focusing her thoughts away from the doubt that threatened to seep back into her mind. It was only a nightmare. Your friends still love you. Was it only a nightmare? Her subconscious treacherously fired back. She maintained the chant until she spotted Bonbon bon and Coldheart making their way along the row of ponies handing each patient two small paper cups and watching them consume the contents carefully. Pills and water, Twilight assumed, eyeing the cups with a sense of apprehension. Once the nurses were satisfied, they moved on down the line while an orderly escorted the patient to the bathroom. Twilight frowned. The apprehension she understood, but there was something else. She was staring at the cups with a growing desire, a revelation she found disquieting. Still, she was unable to glance away, only more aware of the ache in her skull as the nurses drew closer. Her thoughts passed back to the last time she had been given medication, and the painkillers they had included. You don't have to feel pain, a voice whispered insidiously, a low hiss that seemed to come from everywhere at once and nowhere at all. They can help it stop hurting. You don't need much to make you forget that bump on your head. A little painkiller isn't going to affect anything. It's nothing at all. It was a persuasive argument. If she were back home, she would have reached for the painkillers long ago. What problem was there in asking them to give her what she would have given herself? Twilight shook her head from side to side, as if to physically clear away the treacherous haze gripping her thoughts. Stop thinking like that, she snarled at herself. I'm not so cowardly and desperate that I'm going to ask them to drug me. 
I am responsible for more than myself. My friends need me to stay strong. They don't deserve to live this life any more than I do. This is about them as much as it is about me. Twilight drew up straighter, watching the approaching nurses with a renewed sense of wary disdain. She took strength from her distrust, using it to feed her convictions. This is about Applejack's family, and Beaky Bye's scars, and Rainbow Dash's anger, and everything else wrong with this world. I might be the only pony that remembers how things are supposed to be. I can't surrender, because there isn't any pony else they can count on. I need to keep focused for the sake of my friends. A disgusting grin spread wide in her memories. Before I could speak, Twilight brought a mental hoof down onto the image, smashing it into a milling, glittering shards. The fractured smile melted away like snowflakes under a hot sun. I am not going to let some nightmare break my will. Whatever is happening, whatever caused this, I will not give in to self-doubt. I'll prove to myself, to everyone, that I do not just hurt other ponies. Friendship is magic, and I am friends with the elements of harmony. We can return this world to the way it should be. The anger at her imprisonment, her nightmares, the fates of her friends. At the whole topsy-turvy world she was trapped in burned away more of her insecurity, filling her with the warmth of her firm determination. For the first time since she had awoken that day, Twilight felt fully in control of her thoughts. She basked in her triumph, enjoying her small victory. She didn't get to enjoy it for long. So, Twilight, did you hear anything about that terrible fracas during dinner yesterday? The question pulled Twilight out of her introspective revere. Warily glancing over to the other mare, Twilight relaxed ever so slightly once she noticed the unicorn had returned to something approaching her initially calm demeanor. Hm? Oh, yes. I heard some things about it. I should hope so. It ruined what was already a pitiful excuse for a meal. It isn't enough that we have to sit shoulder to shoulder with the ill and destitute. No. We have to deal with uncultured ponies fighting each other. Twilight glanced past the mare as Bon Bon and Coldheart finally reached the two unicorns. A tired-looking orderly walked along with them, a large tray holding dozens of identical paper cups balanced carefully in his mouth. Noticing the shift in attention, the unicorn followed toward its gaze. The corners of her mouth dropped the instant her eyes fell upon the nurses. It is a disgrace how poorly run this establishment is she said, raising her voice as she pretended she was still talking to Twilight. She lifted her chin in a display of haughty disapproval that matched Twilight's memories of the worst sort in Canterlotty Glee. I will have some scathing things to say about this place. Twilight, let me tell you. The two earth ponies ignored her remarks, maintaining their forced cheerfulness. Hello, Silverglow. How are you doing this morning? Bon Bon asked finally naming Twilight's talkative neighbor. That is Miss Glow to you, brusquely. She stated brusquely. Bon Bon's smile didn't even waver, but the lines in Coldheart's face deepened. Still, Twilight watched as they adjusted their stances slightly, an almost imperceptible shift towards a more aggressive posture. Silver Glow continued to admonish the two nurses either failing to notice their responses, or, more likely in Twilight's opinion, not caring what they thought. And I am once again appalled and dismayed by the conditions here at Bratuf, she declared, lightly stamping one hoof for emphasis. When we aren't forced to follow your inane schedules, we have to endure the company of the sort of riffraff that should never have been admitted here. I have half a mind to make another complaint to the administrators about the quality of care I am receiving. Well, if you feel strongly about it, you can always bring it up in group therapy or when you see a doctor, said Coldheart, the dry and exasperated tone making it clear she had repeated the same message more than once. Her eyes narrowed slightly. But regardless of your decision, you still have to take your medicine and let us complete our inspections. Silverglow eyed both nurses contemptuously. Fine, she said with a sniff, making sure they understood that she was doing them a favor. Reluctantly, she took the cup from Bon Bon's hoof and swallowed her medication, washing the pills down with a mouthful of water. Bon Bon said, with an exaggerated roll of her eyes, Silver opened her mouth wide, allowing the nurse to peer inside and ensure she wasn't squirreling the pills away in her cheeks. 
Twilight had a strong suspicion that Bon Bon took longer inspecting the unicorn's mouth than was strictly necessary. Silver's jaw began to tremble slightly as time dragged on. I'll clear, the nurse eventually declared, a hint of disappointment in her voice. Oh well, better luck next time. Silver's mouth snapped shut with a soft click. Her glare lingered on Bon Bon as she massaged her jaw. Bon Bon ignored the anger and directed her way, making no attempt to hide her amused smirk as she trotted over to Twilight. She met Twilight's gaze and winked playfully. Twilight grinned back. Okay, Silver Glow, time for the horn inspection, said Coldheart, stressing the name as she took up the departing nurse's position in front of the glowering mare. Just be quick about it, will you? said Silver as she lifted her snout up into the air. I already feel soiled enough as it is. I don't appreciate having some earth pony's dirty hooves all over my face, and that heavy thing you've forced me to wear on my horn never seems to get clean. Distracted watching Bon Bon pick her medication from the orderly's tray, it took a heartbeat before Silver's words registered in Twilight's mind. Something on her horn? She snapped her head around as Coldheart reached up towards Silver's horn, a horn, she finally realized, was sheathed with a familiar piece of bulky white fabric. How did I miss that? She thought, as she stared at the magical suppressor. Twilight grew more conscious of the way upon her own horn as Coldheart carefully examined Silver's. She glanced to her left, quickly spotting another unicorn a few patients down, a suppressor strangling his horn as well. She checked the rest of the unicorns, unnerved but unsurprised to note that each horn was hidden beneath a fabric scabbard. Do they do that to all the unicorns they have here? No, I swear I saw patients during dinner who didn't have them covered. Right? Unable to answer her question, Twilight returned her gaze to Bonbon. Bon. The nurse turned away from the orderly, one hoof holding a pair of paper cups. Here you go, Twilight. This should help you feel a little better, said Bonbon bon with a smile gesturing at the one filled with the multicolored medication. Despite her misgivings, she quietly accepted the cup. Some of the fire she had nurtured was snuffed out in a shower of cold resignation. What could she do? Taking the medication was bad, but the punishment for refusing was worse. Bonbon bon had made that point absolutely clear the previous night. Despite her submission being inevitable, there was still a moment's hesitation. She sighed. This isn't surrender, she told herself as she popped the pills into her mouth, following them up a second later with a lukewarm water chaser. It's just doing what is prudent and necessary. Now go ahead and open your mouth for me, Twilight. I just need to make sure you swallowed your medicine, okay? Bonbon asked, her broad smile leaving Twilight unsure as to how much of her cheerful personality was sincere, and how much was more artificial Bonhamai. Obediently, she opened her mouth wide. Having another pony suspiciously examining the inside of her mouth was not a pleasant experience, but she did her best to endure it. Like the medicine, it couldn't be helped. These indignities don't matter. I need to focus on my goals, she reminded herself, holding back her temper. Play along for now and focus on learning what you can. After just a few seconds, Bonbon bon gave her the all clear, confirming Twilight's suspicions about her neighbor's lengthy examination. As Bonbon bon stepped away, Twilight glanced to her right, half expecting to see Silverglow giving her a petulant glare. Instead, the mare was already trotting away, her head held stiffly in the air, her tail swishing irritably from side to side. Nurse Coldheart remained close by but had her back to Twilight, talking to a younger nurse that must have arrived when Twilight was distracted. Coldheart gestured for her to go with Bonbon bon before finally turning around again. Okay, Twilight, it's your turn she said as she shuffled closer. I'll need to check to make sure the magical suppressor is still intact. It's something we do every morning, but doesn't take long. And once I'm done, I'll escort you to the bathroom myself. Twilight glanced at the dozen ponies still lined up with her. Do you have any other patients to examine? I'm going to let the new girl finish up with Bonbon. Bon. She tilted her head towards the other nurse. She could use some more practical experience, and these examinations are a good way to ease ponies into things. Her painted face brightened. Besides, I want to stick with you until we meet Dr. AJ. That way I can help you out and answer your questions so we can make sure everything goes smoothly. Doesn't that sound good? Well, I am curious about one thing, said Twilight. 
taking the opportunity to voice the question that had been percolating at the back of her mind. Do all the unicorns have to wear the magical silencers? Well, no. Not all unicorns have to wear them, said Coldheart, picking her words with obvious care as she played her hoof over the suppressor. She lightly tugged at the fabric and inspected the buckles, making sure nothing was torn or loose. Unicorns only have to wear them when their magical abilities threaten their health and safety. So what you're saying is that you do it to the dangerous ponies, the ones you're worried might use their magic to escape or attack some pony, she said, unable to keep some of her bitterness from seeping into her tone. I understand. It makes perfect sense. After all, an insane unicorn could do a lot of damage. You need to protect yourself and the other patients from the really crazy ones. Coldheart frowned. Twilight, we don't appreciate terms like crazy or insane around here, she chided, mild displeasure written on her powdered face. And you're wrong, but for the well-being of our patients. Many unicorns need to have their magical connection interrupted because of their illnesses and not over fears about what they might do if they could cast spells. There are many diseases and disorders that can react negatively to magic usage. Twilight blinked, honestly surprised by the nurse's words. Small snippets from her studies floated to the surface of her mind, half-remembered footnotes and passing references to the role of magic in certain ailments. It had never been an area she had closely studied, but she had picked up enough working in the other fields to find herself believing Coldheart's words. So there are diseases where just being able to use magic can cause problems? She leaned forward hungrily, scholarly curiosity shoving aside bitter cynicism. I mean, I've studied plenty of arcane theory, but I haven't read much about how magic relates to mental illnesses. Do the illnesses only respond differently with unicorns, or does any magical influence have a negative impact? Does casting a spell have the same effect as being targeted by one? What about being in the vicinity of an active spellcaster? Do magically reactive pulses and potions react differently if the- She halted her flurry of questions when she noticed the laughter in the nurse's eyes and her barely suppressed grin. Like a colt that had been playing with his mother's makeup, Twilight didn't feel any embarrassment until she finally recognized the amused state of another. She snapped her mouth shut as she turned a brilliant shade of scarlet. There is no shame in actually enjoying learning new things, she thought defensively, her declaration doing nothing for the warmth in her blushing face. Coldheart's amusement quickly faded. All right, Twilight, she said with a professional air. I'll try to answer your questions, but we don't have that much time. We have a schedule to keep, and you can't be late for your morning meetings. I'll explain while we head to the bathroom, all right? Twilight nodded and grabbed her things. She wanted answers, and she wasn't going to let a little embarrassment get in the way. Besides, it's not like you haven't been in a situation like this before, she pointed out. Surprisingly, it didn't help her feel any better thinking back on the many times her eagerness had ended up embarrassing her. So why is it so different from us than other ponies? Well, in the simplest of terms, it all has to do with how unicorns interact with magic. Unlike, Pegas unlike Pegasi or Earth ponies, you unicorns shape arcane energy with your mind, explained Coldheart. For non-unicorns, magic is something intuitive and subconscious. Pegasi have to learn how to fly, but they don't have to learn how to walk on clouds. They just do. It's innate, like digesting food. I know that. I took health and biology classes in school, she stated flatly, trying to keep her impatience in check and ignoring the nurse's odd look. I just need to know why it's so different that I need a suppressor on my horn. It's because unicorns control magic with their minds, patiently repeated Coldheart. If the mind itself isn't functioning properly, then the magic it is using becomes unstable, and because some diseases alter perceptions of reality. Even casual use of magic becomes a true health hazard. In many, u in many ways, it's like a fool's magical surges. The fool uses magic erratically because their mind isn't fully developed. The last piece fell into place, leaving Twilight feeling particularly slow. Her blush returned with a vengeance. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, of course. Twilight kept her voice steady as she continued her questions. But except for some of the innate abilities of Earth Ponies and Pegasi, magic by itself doesn't directly affect a pony unless it is guided by a spell. So how does just passive exposure to magical energy affect the disease? Passive exposure doesn't affect anything, 
After all, our staff use spells and patience all the time, she pointed out. It's the ability to utilize magic that can lead to problems. So, a disease can be directly affected by a unicorn's ability to cast a spell? I don't believe it affects the disease directly, the nurse replied, sounding less sure of herself than before. Although, you'll have to ask one of the doctors to be sure. In my experiences, the symptoms are the problem. Because of the mental link, they can become unpredictable and dangerous. Coltart glanced away. Hallucinations are the worst. A pony's illness deceives them utterly, altering how they think and what they feel. Until magic itself becomes a liability, it's not even the very real danger of them casting the wrong spell unwillingly. They might draw in too much power and cause brain damage. If their senses betray them, they can easily end up burning away their minds without even realizing it. Twilight was struck by the deep weariness in the nurse's eyes, feeling like she was getting an unguarded glimpse into the older mare's soul. Coltheart wanted to hide her scars, hoping to mask the premature wrinkles with bright makeup. But her eyes couldn't lie. Twilight turned away. What could she say after that? Lost in her thoughts, Nurse Coldheart seemed content to let the silence linger. Twilight couldn't help but dwell upon her words, shivering at the thought of a unicorn causing themselves brain damage. An arcane burnout was the dark side of unicorn magic, something every unicorn was warned about growing up. It had always seemed such a terribly unlikely occurrence to Twilight. The idea of some pony drawing in so much magical energy that it created a feedback loop and they ended up frying their own minds. If they didn't pass out from exhaustion first, the searing pain would make any pony give up long before they could cause themselves lasting harm. Any sane pony, she corrected herself, letting her eyes roam over the locked metal doors that ran the length of the hallway. The faces of silver glow and the twitchy orange stallion sprang to mind. A chill passed down her spine, making the hairs on her neck stand on end. Not every pony here is.